Action time! Alright ladies and gents, gentlemen, I am back, boys and girls. Today we have Lisa Marie Presley talks Elvis memories and his death. So, um, really touchy subject here, topic. So, um, yeah, uh, let's see what this is about. You know, let's hop right into it. And yeah, uh, by the way, I'm doing well, but uh, just let you guys know a little background. I've been pretty busy, you know, got a new job, uh, uh, a couple of things I'm doing, you know. Hopefully, um, in next my next year, I will have upgraded, you know, so at least the camera wise or something, you know, I'll have that somewhat upgraded, hopefully, um, you know, early next year. <clears throat> and yeah, hopefully you guys have a good holiday and Christmas, so, you know, yeah. Let's hop right into it, guys, in three, two, one. Maybe. He was very protective. I adore. Oh, hold on. Sorry. All right, let's rewind that back. In three, two, one. Let's hit that play button. Maybe. He was very protective, <coughs> very adoring, very watchful. And, um, you know, I knew that, that I, I knew that I was loved. There's no question about that. It's not something that is easy to come by, obviously. But it was very apparent to me. And it was very mutual. I was in his bathroom upstairs at Graceland, and he caught me. Uh, I think I was lip syncing in the mirror. I think I was two. Not so necessarily aware of who he was, but just in my own world, singing with a microphone in front of the mirror. And Anyway, I'm sure he got a huge kick out of it, and I don't know how long he was actually watching me. But he never embarrassed me, never said anything. And then I think he was getting other people to come watch as well. <laughs> The only person who could get me in the bathtub was my father. He's the one that would have to actually put me in and make me. I wouldn't argue with him, ever. There was no schedule, there was no time at Graceland, no rules. It was almost like this fun house that no matter what you did, no matter what you destroyed, no matter what you threw, no matter what broke, it would somehow miraculously get replaced within 24 hours. And it was quite the lively home. The basement was always a room, for whatever reason, for mayhem. And I would transform when I would go down the stairs. And I don't know why, just throwing things down there and, you know, getting into trouble. And he would do similar things down there. He'd get, like, you know, mischievous, as always. My father okay. decided to give me a pony. She was very small. So he put me on her outside, and then he takes her and through the back door and in the house. He was worried that Dodger, the grandmother, was going to hear this and was going to freak out and... So all of a sudden the horse decides to, you know, relieve himself and not in a pretty way on the, on the carpet. <laughs> everyone would have horses and golf carts. One person would get on and then everyone would get on and then it would be like, you know, like a convoy of golf carts. It was always it looks crazy. fun. I also led the convoy Bumper when cars. I got old enough to, to hit the pedal. I had about five friends up there and then some cousins. So we'd all sort of congregate when I'd come to town and everyone would get a golf cart, which was a nightmare. <laughs> I fired people, yeah. Apparently I did. <laughs> I could decapitate a golf cart. I could take the hood off by running under a tree. I could go through the fence and it would get fixed within three days. Like, if wow. it wasn't me you know, running the golf cart through a tree or through the forest or through a fence, it was my father. He would rent out Liberty Land and we'd stay there all night riding roller coasters over and over and over and over all night long. The roller coaster would go up to the highest point and then he would get out of it and make everybody panic, thinking that he'd fall off. He would be sitting somewhere on the roller coaster when you'd get in That's a car. That's dangerous. And behind the wheel. <laughs> this could be your last minute. Same thing with the plane. And all of a sudden the captain would come on out and please fasten your seatbelt because he was going to land the plane. <laughs> And it was just like everybody would stick their head between their knees, <laughs> hide or something, you know, bury themselves in the sea. It was just like one of those oh, he did that? good God moments. He, he always liked the danger. He loved danger. Hawaii. He did mm. some Hawaiian songs. Mm. He loved the Hawaiian people. He loved Hawaii. And I never actually put it together, but I, I kind of had the same thing happen when I was, I think, 18. My mom <laughs> made me go. And, um, <laughs> Ever since then, I've, like, I've get off me. gone back every year. I wrote a lot of poetry. 
starting off very dark and I just said to him, please, you're not going to die or you don't die. I didn't know then what was going on, so I wish I had. Oh, poor you know, baby. I, I didn't have any clue what was really happening. I just thought he's not happy. My God, what's going on? And he was, you know, I remember seeing his stomach and worried to death mm. over that. It hurts me. There were several times where I would just feel worried and go check on him, and I'd find him in these bad states out of nowhere. He would just start falling, and I'd have to go run and catch him, and he was about 6'2", and quite heavy, and I'm holding him up. It was just starting to become too common. He was not happy. Mm. He was in such an ivory tower and so untouchable and so alienated. After a while, he held the reins on the cart for as long as he could, and then he could no longer withstand that it's not easy i don't know a lot of people that have pulled it off but haven't gone to self-destruction i don't like talking about this it was august 16th um at 4 a.m i was supposed to be asleep actually he found me and you know go to bed and i said okay and i and i i think he kissed me goodnight and i ran off and he had come in and kissed me goodnight after that that was the last time i saw him alive And this is where it gets touch, touchy. Three days. And there was something very mm -hmm. oddly comforting about that, which made it not necessarily real for me. Um, as I stayed in there with it almost the whole time. We can stop. Hmm. Wow, she was very uh, um, emotional right there. You could see she was about to break. Really deep wound there. And that's where it ends, guys. That's the end of it. She she didn't want to keep going, I understand. That's where it hits her. I mean, she lost her father. Very popular dad, you know. That's, that's Elvis. Uh, but yeah, he was loving, caring, down-to-earth, humble guy. His generosity, you know, and all that. Very touching, but uh, yeah, that's the end, guys. That's that was interesting hearing her output, hearing her point of view, <coughs> hearing her thoughts as well. Uh, even though she couldn't finish the interview, um, but yeah, uh, it's pretty sad. Well, um, hopefully, you guys, uh, you know, are doing well as uh, you know and okay this holiday season. So. Yeah, um, you know, have a good Christmas, obviously, coming up. Hopefully, you guys are okay, you know, everything is fine. I'm doing good, by the way. I'm back, you know. Um, my schedule is, is a little rough, you know, when it comes to doing reactions, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm trying. But, yeah, uh, you guys uh, take care, guys. I'm out of here. This has been an interesting video, but uh, yeah, if you guys are new, obviously hit that subscribe button, give this video a like if you enjoyed this. I don't know if you can enjoy this reaction, but if you found it enlightening, whatever the case may be, I'll see you guys later on the next video. Peace.